everyone, I'm Mike Turner. I'm in the Will Call showroom of Pro Sound and Stage Lighting. Today we're going to be doing kind of a follow-up video to my DMX 101 and we're going to be discussing LEDs in specific. Now, yes, we all know what LEDs are, or maybe we don't, but in essence what I'm going to try to do is make sure that you understand exactly what they are, how they work, and how they differ from halogen lamps and what's going to benefit you and, and may not. So. Uh, we'll kind of get started here and kind of explain to you what LED stands for. It doesn't mean LED. <laughs> LED stands for Light Emitting Diode. So there's actually a, a diode in there that is what's actually making the light. Okay? So we'll start off with um, kind of the various different types of LEDs and, and the way that they work. Um, I'll start off with something that kind of started in the beginning. You'll see here you have these tiny little LEDs they are kind of boxed together in groups and they can mix to get your color mixing. Then you would move on to these 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter LEDs that are spread out a little bit more evenly so that you can get your color mixing. This is actually a UV LED. I'll go into more detail about that shortly, but at this moment I just wanted you to just kind of see that it's available. And then over here, we have something called a tri-LED. And I'm going to go into more detail about how that works, but essentially, just to kind of make sure that you understand, in the diode, there is a chip. That chip generally tells it what color it's going to be. There is no way that an actual LED can be more than one color. There would be more than one chip that would allow that LED to emit more than one color at maybe you know, one point or various points. So we'll kind of look at this one and this one here. This is your traditional LED. I like to call these Skittles. Main reason being is you'll notice when I change different colors, these are always green. These are always red. And these are always going to be blue. Okay? So if you want solid colors, you'll notice that you're losing about 60% of your lights here. So the light is not going to be as bright when you're doing a solid color as maybe when you're doing a mix, like a purple. You'll see there's actually more diodes emitting here, emitting light here to make purple. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add in my green, which is gonna do the full color spectrum, which is known as LED white, okay? If you notice, all LEDs are on. So this is gonna be the brightest this type of LED is going to be. Now I'm gonna move over to here, and I'm gonna turn everything down for you. One thing I want you to notice no matter what color I do, they're always on. And the reason being is there is a tri-chip inside. So what happens, these LEDs mix the colors before they even send the color out to you. So just to kind of give you an example, I'll go back to purple here. All I'm doing is adding in my red. See? So no matter what color I do, all lights are on. So now I'm going to try to help you guys figure out what LEDs are going to work best for you and why. So this type of LED is going to be considerably more affordable. Um, this video is not meant to be proprietary, but there's lots of companies out there that have this type of LED. Typically, you can get this type of LED fixture for around $100, give or take $15, $20, depending on what you're doing. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong on this. They will throw 15 to 30 feet high. It's a great fixture. It's dependable. There's nothing wrong with these LEDs. Uh, again, just the only downfall I would say is that when you're doing single colors, you're losing 60% of your LEDs. So again, going back to this one, no matter what color you're on, it's going to all be on. So it's going to be equally as bright no matter what color you're doing. Now, how this is going to affect you? All my wedding DJs that are doing up lighting, uh, you're going to get various color requests from your brides and the people that you're working with. Um, you're going to oftentimes get a request for an amber. Amber and LED is usually equal parts red, and we've got some green in there, and we usually pull out a little bit of the green where it almost looks like an orange. Now, I want you to take note of this LED. If you're looking straight at it, it essentially looks like you just have red and green lights on. But if you were to look at how this looked how this was casting light against the wall, it would actually look like an orange or an amber. The problem with this kind is that sometimes, depending on how close this light is to the wall, 
at the base or wherever it's closest to the fixture itself, you'll get something known as color shadowing. And the reason being is you'll notice when you're looking straight at it, you're mixing two colors to get, to get one color. So you can sometimes see the green LEDs at the base of the wall. Um, again, you can kind of compensate for this by pulling the light away from the wall and that'll help a little bit, but not always. And sometimes by pulling the light away from the wall, you're not getting the kind of throw that you're looking for. Again, this is not necessarily an advertisement for tri-LEDs, but again, because the color mixing is done at the source, you don't get hardly any color shadowing at all. So for you guys that are going to be doing a, things that are more elegant, working with some really picky wedding planners, I would probably suggest going with Tri-LED. Main reason being, again, you're not going to get color shadowing. Your colors are going to be consistently bright no matter what color you're doing. Another thing that you might want to take note of, again, going back to this, this is essentially the diode with what I would call a, a glass raindrop on top. Um, there's not really anything that's designed to shoot the light in any specific direction or anything like that. It just kind of just casts the light. If you look over to tri-LEDs, usually what you're going to see, and again, uh, let's see if Adam here can get a close-up, you'll see that in the center there's actually a magnifying glass. It looks very, very similar to, you know, looking at the front of a high-end uh, sports car where they have those HID lights. That's designed to magnify that light and shoot it far. And then you'll notice around the outside here, you'll see that it's frosted. That's des designed to actually diffuse the light a little bit. And the reason why this may or may not work out better for you is you kind of get a little bit better of an all-purpose light. Because you have the center point that's designed to make the light shoot far, and then you have the frosted exterior part of the light that kind of makes it go wide, you get a nice even color throw that's going to go far and you're also going to get a little bit wider wall wash than you could, would with just your traditional LED. Again, I'm not trying to down this one. I'm just letting you know the differences of why you might look at a $180 tri-LED versus maybe a $100 um, standard LED. Another type of LED of this one I kind of show you here. Uh, this is actually a UV or a black light LED. Now, I'm just telling you guys this so that you'll know Personally, I've worked with a lot of bowling alleys that do the cosmic bowling. I've worked with a lot of people that are trying to do black light parties and things of that nature. In the past, we bought those four foot tubes that we all know have a life of about <laughs> three to six months. They're very fragile. Those lights emit light, but they don't throw light. This LED is extremely powerful. You guys can't tell from this video, but from one, this little bar right here, I can easily shoot 30 feet of black light at about maybe a 10 foot span and completely fill up, I'd say a thousand square foot room with full black light. In order to do that with all those tubes, you'd need about 15 of them. So granted, this is gonna be a little bit more expensive than the tubes, but again, because it's intelligent lighting, I can make this strobe, I can make it pulse, I can do all kinds of neat things because it's an LED that I couldn't do with my tubes. And again, I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more later. Most LEDs are rated at a minimum of 50,000 hours. So you're never going to have to replace these. Well, not within the life of the need, at least. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second here. I work with a lot of churches. I work with a lot of schools uh, that already have existing halogen fixtures. And they're used to buying the color gels. And they come to me and, you know, I try to do a bid for them. You know, there's a bunch of LEDs. And you know, sometimes they're looking at five to ten plus thousand dollars to, to do an auditorium. And, and let's be honest, that, that's a big hunk. You know, it's a lot more expensive than buying a bunch of halogen bulbs. But the one thing that I want to make sure that everybody remembers, when you're using the halogen lamps and you're doing some color changing, there is no color changing. You're putting a color gel in front of it, and if you want your lights to change colors, you're having to sacrifice the light that's got the blue gel on it to turn on the red light that's got the red gel on it. So it's not very efficient. And typically you're running at least a 250 watt halogen lamp in all those fixtures. If you're running 10 of those, that's pulling a lot of power from your wall. Not to mention all the churches and the schools that have uh, air conditioning to be concerned with. Those lights are pushing out a lot of heat, a lot. And to compensate for that, you're having to turn up your AC. So just so that everyone knows, when you run with LEDs, granted it's a little bit more expensive up front, but you don't have to run your AC at full blast in the middle of summer on a Sunday to keep everybody in your church comfortable without running the fans. We've all seen that. It's because it's hot in there. They don't pull hardly any electricity off the wall. You can daisy chain your LEDs, usually 15 to 20 lights off of one wall circuit. 
you can leave these things running all day long and your electricity bill is going to be hardly anything at all. So again, I don't want people to feel like you have to spend all this money on LEDs, but to be honest, you're going to save money over time. And your electricity bill, you're going to save time in replacing bulbs. And let's be honest, your average halogen bulb is going to be what, 15 to 30 bucks? It's not expensive. The problem is, at churches, the ceilings are 15 plus feet high, sometimes 30 feet high. It's not the problem of replacing the bulb, it's the fact that somebody's got to get on this ladder. He's got to climb all the way up there. He's got to take the bulb out, climb all the way down, go buy the bulb or find the one in the warehouse where they've got it, go back and put it up. And then when he's using color gels, we all know that if they're on for a good month or so, those things are going to start to get bleached out. Your reds aren't going to look like reds anymore. They're going to be fading into pinks. It's just a nightmare. It's old school technology that it's time to move on. This is going to save you money. This is going to make your life easier. And it's just a better route to go. So anyhow, guys, I hope that helped you out. Feel free to uh, give us a call. Uh, you can hit us up online and, and ask questions if you want. Everyone here at ProSound is very knowledgeable on LEDs and how they work and how they can fit your situation. We're very willing to build a custom uh, bid for you that way for all the schools and churches that you know, are thinking of completely revamping their lighting. We'll make it all work for you. We know what we're doing and we're going to get it done right the first time. I'm Mike Turner. I'm reporting from the showroom of ProSound and Stage Lighting and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day.